Hello, this is David. And in this installment, I'm going to talk about a question that I'm frequently asked by early trainees in pathology. And the question they usually ask is, how does one use immunoperoxidase markers to determine the lineage, the tissue lineage of something? So I'll attempt to give some very basic insight at the level of the inquisitive medical student or the very early pathology trainee. So as an introduction, the body contains tissue types of various lineages. And I won't try to be very accurate or very precise in my review of the embryology, but basically the body develops from initially a two-layered disc that then becomes a three-layered disc that's sandwiched between fluid-filled cavities in the early embryo. And so if we imagine this is the amniotic cavity and this is the yolk sac, there are these layers that form in between. The top layer will term ectoderm, the middle layer, mesoderm, and the bottom layer, endoderm. And of course, the embryo folds in a complex manner to generate the, the fetus with its complex continuity of body cavities. But these various primary layers, these primordial layers of ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm give rise to all the tissue types that ultimately form the body. The ectoderm gives rise to the skin and all the surface epithelial structures. Epithelium is something that lines the structure. So all the surface epithelial structure and also all neural structures because the neural structure comes from the ectoderm in a manner that's beyond the scope of this discussion. But all neural structures, including the brain, spinal cord, are derived from the ectoderm by formation of something called the neural tube. So the outside skin and all neural structures come from the ectoderm. Then there's sort of a middle connective tissue layer that we'll term mesoderm. And all the connective tissue of the body, including the blood vessels and the context, contents of those blood vessels, in other words, the hematolymphoid tissue comes from the mesoderm. And then there's an inner line, lining, the endoderm. And that formed the lining of all of the viscera of the body, as well as some of the parenchyma of the solid organs. So the lining of the lungs, the lining of the gut, etc., all come from endodermally derived structures. Now, clearly, some organs are more complex, such as the kidney, which is derived from a part of the mesoderm, um, or a derivative of the, meso uh, of the mesoderm, um, the metanephros, and also a part of the endoderm, the metanephric, or the, the, sorry, the ureteric bud. And there's a sort of complex, what we would call epithelial to mesenchymal induction. In other words, a dance between the endoderm and the mesoderm to sculpt the glomeruli and the collecting tubules. But that's beyond the scope of this conversation. And at this point, I just want to emphasize that the various tissues of the body all derive from three primary lineages. And depending on what lineage they came from determines their fundamental characteristic. And the type of tumors, and this is really the focal point here, the type of tumors that arise from the derivatives of these structures are very different. So, Let's jump now to what time of type of tumors exists in the body. So one could get tumors of epithelium or surface lining, and these are termed carcinoma. And carcinoma means a tumor of a surface lining. And these surface linings are either ectoderm or endoderm. The surface that makes the skin and the neural tissue is the ectoderm. The surface that lines the viscera is the endoderm. So any tumor that's derived from ectoderm or endoderm can be a carcinoma, which is a tumor of epithelium or lining type tissue. So that's carcinoma. The second type of tumor is a tumor of the connective tissue, a tumor that derives from the mesoderm, this layer. And that tumor of the connective tissue of mesodermal origin is what forms a sarcoma when it becomes malignant. So we're talking here about malignant tumors, not benign. So sorry, I should have clarified that. So a benign, a benign tumor we won't talk about now. So a malignant epithelial tumor is termed a carcinoma. 
a malignant mesenchymal tumor, in other words, a malignant tumor of mesodermal origin, is termed a sarcoma. Now, one of the sub-branches of the neuroectoderm, so still really an ectodermal derivative, but so distinct that it deserves its own reference, is a melanoma, or a tumor of melanocytic lesion, of melanocytic lineage. And tumors of melanocytes are called melanoma. And one other type of tumor that sort of deserves its own subcategory are tumors of the lymphoid tissue, even though in a sense lymphoid tissues arise from mesenchyme, arise from mesoderm, they sort of get their own special designation and they're called lymphoma. So the four main categories of malignant tumors that we'll discuss are carcinoma, which are tumors of epithelial origin that could either be ectodermally or endodermally derived, sarcomas, which are tumors of mesenchymal origins that are mesodermally derived, melanomas that are from melanocytes, in other words, neural crest tumors, and lymphoma, which are tumors that are, in a sense, also mesenchymally derived, but from the lymphoid lineage. Now, sometimes a pathologist is faced with a very undifferentiated tumor. In other words, a tumor that it, it just lacks real good characterization by light microscopy. It's just a bunch of cells, and you can't tell what it is by light microscopy, by its appearance. In other words, its phenotype, its light microscopic phenotype, is indistinct. Indistinct. So, what you could then attempt to do is look at its protein expression for specific proteins and see if you could determine its immunophenotype. And that'll give you immunophenotype, and that'll give you an idea of the lineage in which it comes from. So it turns out that there are markers for immunohistochemical markers for all the major types of categories that we mentioned. So, for epithelium, for tumors of epithelial um, origin, the major class of marker of antibody that we use are keratins, which are um, intermediate filaments, intercellular intermediate filaments that are present in epithelial cells. So they're called cytokeratins. Um, and those cytokeratins help categorize something as a carcinoma, because they suggest epithelial origin. So if you want to know, if there's another marker, by the way, another marker, there's several markers, but another marker I'll mention is EMA, epith epithelial membrane antigen. So for very broad strokes, because it's at an introductory level, positivity for cytokeratin or EMA suggests epithelial origin, in other words, carcinoma. What about, let's skip to melanoma. The markers for melanoma will be S100, Melan A, and HMB45. But I'll warn you that none of these markers are entirely specific, as you'll see as you go on in your pathology career. But in very broad strokes, if you have a tumor of unknown primary, if you want to know if it's a carcinoma, try cytokeratin and EMA. If you want to know it's a melanoma, try S100, Melan A, and HMB45. For lymphoma, there's a marker called LCA, or CD45, which is leukocyte common antigen, which sometimes may be positive, and that's a good marker. Now, some people say that the marker of vimentin, which is another intermediate filament, is a good marker of mesenchymal origin for sarcoma. But vimentin can be positive in melanoma, and I believe it could occasionally be po positive in lymphoma too. So some people joke and say vimentin is so nonspecific, it means the lab is open. In other words, it doesn't tell you very much. But this brings me to my concluding comment, or concluding comment of this segment, where what the pathologist will do when she is faced with a tumor of unknown primary that has an indistinct, undifferentiated light microscopy phenotype on routine hematoxylin and eosin section, the pathologist could then subject the tumor to immunoperoxidase testing to determine the immunophenotype, and the pathologist will use a cocktail, in other words, a panel of markers to try to determine um, what the, where the tumor is from. Because any one marker alone may be uninformative or may be wrong or may be misinformative. But if you use a bunch of markers, then, that, then the constellation, the combination of results could be informative. And the 
cocktail that we often recommend for a tumor of unknown primary to begin with will be a cytokeratin, maybe an EMA, you could throw on a Vimentin, an S100, you may want to do the Melana and HMB45 for backup, but start with the S100 and a CD45. This is your basic panel for a tumor of unknown primary. Now, just to go a little bit further, the first two categories, your carcinomas, could be subdivided into major subclasses. And those major subclasses include a squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma. Squamous cell is sort of like the type of lining of skin or the type of lining of the esophagus. That's a squamous lining, one of the main epithelial types. And the second main epithelial type is glandular type of tissue. Glandular type of tumors, malignant tumors, are adenocarcinomas. And the ones that are more like skin or esophagus, we call them squamous cell carcinomas. So those are your main subclasses classes of epithelial tumors. And there are some markers that will help distinguish between these two categories, although between adeno and squamous cell, although often the light microscopic phenotype will tell you. But there are some markers, such as the type of keratins, the type of cytokeratin that are positive. But we'll leave that for a later talk. Mesenchymal tissue, like connective tissue, you know there's many types. So there's fatty tissue and a malignant tissue, a malignant tumor of fatty tissue would be called a liposarcoma. There's vascular tissue, and a malig which is one of the forms of connective tissue, and a malignant tumor of vascular connective tissue would be called an angiosarcoma. There's skeletal muscle, which is one of your connective tissue types, a malignant tissue of that would be called a rhabdomyosarcoma. There's smooth muscle, and, and a malignant tumor of that would be called a myomyosarcoma. But all of them have the suffix sarcoma, which means a malignant tumor of mesenchymal or connective tissue origin. And with that, I'll end this installment.